the Arkansas AgCast, where we discuss the latest news, trends, and issues impacting Arkansas farmers and ranchers. Our show is brought to you by the Arkansas Farm Bureau Federation and hosted by Rob Anderson and Jason Brown. All righty. Good Thursday afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Rob, Brian, how are you fellas doing? Good. Good to have you back. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks Good for having me. you back too, Brian. Yeah, thanks for having me and back. I, I don't have the tan. <laughs> you know, I kind of thought that you guys might change the locks, but my key to the studio still worked. So I <laughs> uh, appreciate that. <laughs> that gummit. That was a mistake. That. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was forgetting yeah. something. The views were uh, were off the charts. I bet last week. <laughs> <laughs> last week I felt bad. I felt bad because I kept forgetting Matthew was even there and. And say, man, it's lonely. And I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I bet he loved yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I love you too. Yeah. <laughs> I so to the, apologize a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> well, the gang's all back. Yeah. That's uh, good to see you guys. Yeah. It's good to see yeah. you. Yeah. Well, uh, it is officially July. It is. Um, it's hotter than a firecracker outside. Yeah. Not a lot of rain out there lately. I know. I pulled up the radar last night and told my wife, like, there's rain, seemed like all around us, you know, yeah. East, uh, Western Tennessee, North Mississippi, right. everywhere, but we can't seem to buy a drop. We get some thunder now and then. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, southern part of the state had some flooding on uh, Sunday, I think. Was that the El Dorado? Oh, terrible. Area? Yeah. Like Union, Union County, uh, Ashley County. Um, I think they got something like 10 inches. Wow. In, in a matter of hours down there so it's pretty wow. pretty pretty tough on them but um i hope hope everybody down there is recovering okay um well that uh you know rain and sun and heat that that all factors into the crop updates that we have posted uh or that we are posting online this week we've got some yeah some good updates on how things are coming with different crops i think the corn update has gone out yeah. and that's on facebook and uh so you can check that out we have some experts talking about the crop crop status cotton i believe is coming tomorrow okay oh our friend bill robertson that I is guess. correct yeah uh brian and i are going to venture into a soybean field tomorrow and get a crop update from uh our friend dr jeremy ross all right um so that will i think round out we sort of tried to go in order of planting right uh we've talked to jared hardkey and we've covered cotton and corn so soybeans will kind of round us out for row crop yep and again look for look for those on our social media and eventually on the well on youtube and our our website all those usual places yeah any anything else uh any farm bureau events coming well, up in july what Nice hint. You know, yeah. it is July, and it is uh, – that means it's our officers and leaders, and actually this year it's combined with uh, on the back end with our young farmers and ranchers uh, gathering, uh, and that's going to be in Rogers uh, the yep. 21st through 23rd. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we'll have a good crew up there, uh, and I guess – is this the first time to be in Rogers? Brian, you're the event. It's not the first time. For, uh, for it's, wife and it's, it's or been, for O&L. It's been... Uh, it's first it's time been in a while. Four, yeah, it's about four years. Really? Yeah, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. I wonder if anybody will be visiting that that unnamed golf place across the street while we're there. Uh, I believe there's some yeah. plan, too. <laughs> so, yes. All right. Well, uh, one last thing, yeah. I guess, before we dive into the news um the american farm bureau farm dog of the year i felt like uh i was meeting a celebrity last yeah. year when i got to meet the he was, honoree he was very, uh, very popular in atlanta very popular. uh but if you would like to see your furry best friend uh have a chance at, at being named the farm dog of the year uh, nominations are open through july the 15th yeah and uh we would love to see arkansas represent. yeah we'd like to have an arkansas farm dog for sure yeah that'd be killer They're, those those profiles are so cool yeah and yeah. Uh, and i met quite a few farm dogs around the state on some of our trips there's some good know. ones there's some good, good ones there's so, some good boys out there i'd, I'd like yeah. to see them make it in there you know what i love about farm dogs nobody ever tried to get it like tried to have that dog yeah. It just like wandered up. Yeah. <laughs> every I swear, yeah. every farm yeah. dog has the same story. Like, yeah, yeah old blue just yeah. showed up one day and uh, <laughs> never left. Yeah. <laughs> like, never nobody ever went out to like 
get a farm let me dog. Go, yeah. Let me find a good farm dog now. They just show up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, so, anyway. As we move into the news, it's time for an update on how farmers and ranchers are feeling, a uh, confidence survey, uh, yeah. you know, how they're thinking, what they're thinking about the future. And I got to tell you, it's not good. Okay. Um, you know, we, we've seen uh, some updates to this. It's Purdue University. Uh, they released some new data this week. Seven out of every 10 large scale farmers and ranchers expect high inflation to persist into next year, and, a, and 51% think their operations will be worse off financially next summer than they are now. In fact, the university's Ag, Econo- Ag Economy Barometer, um, a monthly gauge of farmer confidence, fell to its second lowest level since October of 2016. That is okay. almost six years there. That's the lowest. Mm-hmm. Um Farmer confidence reached an all-time high back in 2020 when China returned as a steady customer for U.S. food and ag exports and commodity prices were were up. It's been downhill ever since, though, uh, and it's dipped to 97 in the latest survey, the lowest since 96 in April of 2020 and 92 in that October 2016. Yeah. So that's pretty brutal. Uh, agricultural economists James Mintert and Michael Langenmeyer, who oversee the monthly survey, said the majority of farmers expect to see another round of large input cost increases, with 63% of producers expecting higher costs in 2023 over and above the large increases in 2022. So they're expecting the worst. But I, you know, yeah. that's sort of what farmers have to do sometimes in order to hopefully feel better when it's not quite that bad. Yeah, it's part mm. of the uh, part of that resiliency yep. uh, that we know farmers farmers have uh you know I, I love that you brought this survey back uh yeah. we had it i think in june we covered it mm-hmm. i didn't know this thing existed um until then and uh i think it's pretty cool to be able to hear well the quantification of how yeah and I, th- I think it really shows the mood this year um, yeah it's impacted i mean it's across the economy but really with farmers there's some negativity there and rightfully so with the prices yeah. being what they are for inputs absolutely well uh unfortunately we've got a, another challenge here uh that farmers in the state are facing bollworms a uh, pest that farmers are all too familiar with are back with the vengeance uh this year uh, as a matter of fact, surveillance done by the Cooperative Extension Service county agents uh, around the state has found bollworm numbers up compared to this time in 2021. Uh, each year, the agents post traps, uh, and each month they count those trapped insects as an indicator of what pests uh, local fa- farmers might expect to see in their fields. Uh, bollworms can inflict damage on soybeans, corn, and cotton. Um, according to information provided by the U of A System Division of Agriculture, uh, bollworms have multiplied in the past few weeks, uh, specifically Deshea County Extension Agent Don, uh, John David Farabo, uh says he normally sees one to 200 uh, moths per trap per week. Uh, right now he's seeing five to 800 per week. Wow. Um, he said those numbers aren't typical, usually until the end of July or early August when corn is drying out and moths are moving into soybeans um he he mentioned i i didn't put it here to be read but he mentioned uh in some traps he was they were seeing uh up to two thousand bugs a, a week so um anyway just a note to growers if you aren't already aware or aren't already keeping an eye on this uh just know please please watch out for signs of bollworms uh in susceptible crops continue to monitor for uh, for the foreseeable future, get that net out, get to sweeping, um, you know, call your local county agent if you suspect it and get on top right. of that. Well, speaking of insects, pests, pestilence, all the bad stuff. Yeah. Arkansas cattle producers need to be on the lookout as well. Okay. Um, the UA System Division of Agriculture is urging producers to check their herds for unusual ticks and take measures to prevent transmission of and I didn't check the pronunciation on any of this, so this is going to be a brutal segment. Um, <laughs> I was just looking at this yeah. word and uh, theliriosis, yeah. theliriosis, and other tick-related diseases. Yeah. Uh, this warning comes after Asian longhorn ticks were really recently found in Northwest Arkansas by division scientists. The invasive tick can transmit the theliri- theliria, theliria, theliria. Yeah, sure. Go with that, theliria orientalis 
Say that five times fast, please. <laughs> the Filaria orientalis parasite, which attacks blood cells. Uh, the organism has a genotype that can be fatal to cattle, and there's no treatment for the theliriosis. This organism can cause. These ticks are very small, with the adult fem female being only about the size of a, f uh, of a pea, is what that's supposed to be in my script. It doesn't mm -hmm. say that. It's only about the size of a pea, but that's when it's full of blood. So we're talking oh, very wow. small here. Yeah. This makes them hard to detect. Some of the other recommendations to fend off these parasites, keep your pastures clipped and fence off wooded areas. Also, you can use insecticidal ear tags, which is something that the division said they, they use on some of their And recommend uh, address this issue. Yeah. <laughs> um, so again, a lot of things for, for, for growers of all types to uh, look out for in the bug department. That's right. Well, uh, I've got kind of an interesting story on how uh, goats are playing a role in reducing emissions here in the state. Um, Oklahoma, or Arkansas, Oklahoma Gas is partnering with a company called Goats on the Go uh, to reduce carbon and, methane, carbon and methane emissions. Goodness, I can't talk to them. Oh, that's all right. I had a uh, heliorosis. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, vacation brain. Uh, yeah. yeah, no doubt. Uh, <laughs> to reduce carbon and methane emissions while promoting sustainable and efficient energy use, uh, Goats on the Go, that's my my script i tell you what it's just one of those days <laughs> we've got ghosts and machines everywhere ghosts on the goats on the go fort smith is helping aog clear weeds and brush from its service ter territories using a method called targeted grazing uh, targeted grazing is the application of livestock uh in this case goats uh, to accomplish defined vegetation and landscape goals uh, the process controls problem vegetation without uh erosion chemicals or fossil fuels so you might imagine how goats are well suited for this job uh goats yeah. on the go fort smith is operated by andrew goldsmith and it serves crawford franklin sebastian scott and western logan county into in addition to a few um a few oklahoma counties as well uh and the reason i really wanted to include this story this week number one it's i just think it's kind of cool yeah. you know um but also uh goats are awesome yeah. uh, and and because it really ties into some interested targeting gate targeted grazing success uh in the western u.s that um i recently read about mm -hmm. where they're using cattle to create fire breaks oh. as an effective way to contain wildfires um it's usda has been conducting a study to evaluate the effective mm -hmm. effectiveness of targeted grazing uh with cattle and have seen success um, I can tell you one of the articles I read had noted at least three wildfires uh, in the western U.S. Uh, that have been prevented wow. due to these this yeah. grazing. So cattle go out, they graze grass that would be normally yeah. flammable uh, or, or considered tender. Um, That's a graze that down to the ground, mm. sort of creates a fire break. So it'll be interesting to see how targeted grazing applications could grow in popularity in Arkansas. Pop uh, possibly even creating a, a revenue stream. Yeah. I can imagine you have to pay for these these types of services. So um, that's anyway. interesting. And you get to say goats on the go. Yeah, I did fun. get to say goats on the yeah. go. Uh, well, how about a break from the news to learn how you can be a champion for your community? Your Arkansas Farm Bureau membership supports our work on behalf of Arkansas farmers, ranchers, and rural communities around the state. From youth leadership programs and academic scholarships to hunger relief and disaster support and much more. You can make a difference and be a champion for your community. Join today at ARFB.com. Well, did you know that the $40 annual ARFB membership contributes to the work being done in your local community and also the agriculture, agriculture advocacy work we do uh, at the state and national level, your membership truly matters for farmers and communities across the state. And, uh, you know, as we head back, the, the next story we have is a nice story about uh, a contest um, that, uh, you know, the membership supports this kind of thing. Okay. It's the Arkansas, it's the uh, Arkansas Dairy Foods Contest. And um, this is the one that we wanted to compete in. Yeah. And we realized that we were, yeah. weren't qualified. That is right. And, <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, and the thing about this contest is it always ends up with some winners that sound amazingly delicious, and we, we sometimes we put them in the magazine. 
uh, front porch, and man, these look so good. I think we discussed taste testing yeah. some of this stuff. Yeah, I think we should do that. Yeah. Anyway. Well, this year, Caitlin Cooper, 14, of Romance, that's in White County, and Lauren Powell, 15, of, La- of Lowell, Bent County, are the winners of this year's contest. There's two categories, uh, the main dish and party ideas uh, competitions. Uh, Caitlin Cooper's three cheese spinach Alfredo pasta recipe won in the main dish category, Mm-mm. while uh, Lauren Powell's mini cinnamon roll cheesecakes recipe took first place in the party ideas category. I vote for that one. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Each contestant was required to send in a copy of their recipe, a summary of why they chose it, and a video of them making the dish. Judges then reviewed each contestant's submission, uh, made their decisions. Cooper and Powell were selected over three other finalists in their categories, and each received prepaid gift cards as a prize. Nice. The annual Arkansas Dairy Foods Contest is sponsored by Arkansas Farm Bureau and the Arkansas Dairy Cooperative Association and held during the National Dairy Month in June. Um, and again, the results are delicious. So. Excellent. Congrats to uh, Caitlin and Lauren on, on their recognition. Yeah. And, uh, Absolutely. It's awesome. I look forward to seeing those recipes. And I look forward to tasting them. Well, that's yeah. yeah. All right. Well, following up on our report uh, that Rob shared last week, uh, we now have a realistic look based on ground truth uh, for acres planted in Arkansas. This is the first real update since the planning forecast published in March. Uh, so let's just dig into the numbers. Uh, planted acres in the state is down for all commodity crops in reality. Uh, versus the USDA planting intentions report from March. The 150,000 plus acre drop uh, came as a surprise to industry experts and farmers across the state, especially given the favorable spring weather pattern. Uh, It's important to note that while crop acres are down overall, soybean and cotton acres are up over the 2021 growing season. Uh, We talked to our economists here at Farm Bureau and they attributed that decrease in acres to input costs. Uh, the margins are already thin, and the record fertilizer prices probably uh, pushed corn and rice farmers away a bit. Um, We've been we hearing are, that. We've been hearing that all over the place. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Harkey mentioned that mm-hmm. uh, we were down about 400,000 acres in rice this year. Um, anyway, according to the report, peanuts suffered the biggest drop at more than 14%, with just around 30,000 acres actually planted. Um, and you can, uh, if you're interested in reading more, uh, you can visit the USDA's website at usda.gov, uh, look for this report. Uh, there's all kinds of numbers, facts and figures in there, but, um, we just kind of want to keep it light for the, for the show today. So, well, uh, it's not quite this, this show hasn't been quite as much of a bummer as last week's show. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) That wasn't just because you guys were gone. We just had a lot of... And uh, that wasn't a knock um, on Matthew. No, hope, not so. at all. <laughs> yeah. uh, just a lot of bummer news. Uh, and, and again, we, we had some negative stuff there and some things for farmers to watch out for on the uh, parasite front. But. Yeah. But but that one was a very good one. You had a special guest last week. so Yeah, yeah it was good true. to see Matthew. You know, we talk about him every show. Yeah. But he actually, uh, nice actually made, made the... Gets to make an appearance. Made the appearance. One thing, um, uh, one thing I want to mention before we get out of here, yeah. this this is coming across today. We're going through, I, I mentioned earlier, the Front Porch magazine and how we use uh, the recipe sometimes in there. Well, the, the next Front Porch is going to be hitting soon. I was looking at through some of the stuff we've got uh, for, for people who are watching our podcast today. I have a picture here of a Front Porch playground. It's a new kids section. Oh, nice. That is going to be in the publication. It's yeah. got some educational material on where your food comes from. Uh, yeah. Just a little family fun. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's, it's a, it's a magazine that hits a lot of families out there. So we thought sure. this would be a good, good, good thing for the kids to have a little, a little fun during the summer with the, the latest issue. Yeah. It's a great idea. So it's called front porch playground. That's right. All right. I, was, I dig it. I liked um, working on that one. Got to bring out my inner child. Oh, right. now we know the star of the show here. Uh, Ryan has graphic <laughs> skills as well. Uh, oh. <laughs> third wheel on the podcast. It was fun. Right. Speaking yeah. of star of the show, uh, got a got a today in history. I do. Um, okay. You know this. Uh, before I give you that, I, I have my. Um, Six month cleaning at the dentist today. I got an A plus. Oh, okay. Yes. Congratulations. And met a they had a new dentist in there that I hadn't met yet since yeah. I was there. And and she goes, You look like somebody. Like, <laughs> you okay. do nice. You really do. So, look like okay. some, somebody. 
She goes, I'll think yeah. of it. Yeah. She never did. She never thought of it. I was a little nervous what she was who she yeah. was gonna say I look You know, I think it's the hair. <laughs> You, you don't have the hair of a common man. I'll tell you, you have an excellent well, head of hair. Well, thank you. Um, yes, this day in history. Yeah. Um, since it is the vacation season, I uh, thought it was cool. The Hawaiian Islands, in 1898, the Hawaiian Islands were annexed by the United States. Oh, nice. Uh, Congress annexed Hawaii through a joint resolution signed by uh, President William McKinley, on this day in 1898, paving the, way, well. <laughs> <laughs> paving the way for the islands to become a territory in 1900, and then later a U.S. state. 1959. You Boom. Got you got my, right, my you're, dad, you're completing the My cycle. dad was born in that year, and you remember okay. those cards that you used to get with, like, the facts? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, the yeah. tidbits yeah. for the that year, that year. That, yeah. year, that was always, like... On the top of that list oh, when we were getting nice. one well, of those birthday cards, Memory so Man. that's how I, that's how I knew that 1959. Well, let's see if you can guess the year on this one then, because my, my, my dad right now is probably anger texting, like, <laughs> given his age. Yeah. <laughs> this this one is uh, sports trivia, but uh, Czech-born tennis player Martina Navratilova mm -hmm. defeated Chris Everett to win her first of nine Wimbledon singles titles. What year? Seventy-eight. Ooh. Look at him go. Right on the money? Man. Oh, my goodness. I thought I was going to stump somebody, but dang. Wow. Okay. So, you I know tennis, tennis fan? Uh, yeah, you know, I used to play tennis when I was growing up, and my parents are diehard tennis watchers, and they watch Wimbledon. I, they had Wimbledon really? all the time when I was growing yeah. up. Yeah. So, yeah. there you go. We I watched was, a little Wimbledon over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's funny. I, was, I was always for uh, Bjorn Borg. Yeah. He, he was my guy. So. Well, there you yeah. go. Wow. I liked watching tennis Macro history. get mad, but you know, yeah. <laughs> dude, that is really uh, impressive. <laughs> what I, I gotta tell yeah. you. All yeah. right, I well, do, I do what I can. That's let's leave them wanting more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, right. I guess we better wrap up the news <laughs> yeah. and the uh, you know all the all the silliness yeah. for this week, and uh, <laughs> just you know if you are watching or listening, thanks for following along with the Arkansas AdCast. We're grateful for you taking the time to watch and listen. And remember, you can catch the live stream every Thursday, 2 p.m. on Facebook and usually YouTube. Uh, I think we might have had an issue today, but it will be on YouTube. Make sure you turn on uh, notifications to get alerts when we go live. Listen to the audio version later on iTunes, Spotify, or whatever service you use to get your podcasts. Yeah, the Arkansas AdCast is brought to you by the Arkansas Farm Bureau, hosted by me, Jason Brown. And me, Rob Anderson. Our show is produced by Brian Pistol, Matthew Magdafrau, and this week... The ever so talented Ashley Allison Wallace. Thank you for helping us. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week. Thank you very much.